So if you have to work by yourself using multiple power tools, nothing can be more helpful than one of these things. Roller stands are simple, extremely effective, and they're often quite affordable. But what I've found after years of working with them is that if you don't use them the right way, they can actually become one of your biggest dangers on the job site. So today I'm explaining why that is and how to use them safely. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. By the way, if you're new to power tools and you want to drastically speed up your learning process, then check out my online course, Power Tools Explained. That's where I teach you everything you need to know about the 20 most important power tools for carpenters and DIYers. We cover pneumatic tools, shaping tools, rotary tools, all the crazy drills and drivers, and of course, the six essential power saws. That's available right now at thehonestcarpenter.com, so check it out in the link below the video. All right, roller stands are these collapsible, portable supports that help us manage long materials on the job site. We need them because a lot of lumber we build with is eight feet or more, and this length can really work against us when we're cutting. We often have our saws set up on improvised work tables, and lumber projecting from the end of our table or saw can create serious leverage problems. For instance, you might wanna cut 10 inches from an eight foot board. It's just a simple 90 degree cut, but the board hanging out over empty space creates this seesaw effect. Gravity is trying to spring the board up while you're cutting it. This is incredibly dangerous because any board movement under a running miter saw can create a big kickback. Or you might be ripping lumber on a table saw and long boards are falling off the back unsupported. This can crank your board up as you push it forward, once again causing dangerous instability. In instances like this, roller stands can be an extremely helpful tool. They essentially act as an extra set of hands to stabilize a board when no one else is around. By positioning them in just the right place, they not only catch your board ends, but even allow you to move the board forward or backward with ease. It's incredibly helpful and makes your job just so much easier and safer. But the problem is using them isn't quite as intuitive as it seems. And if you break a couple key rules, they can actually make cutting even riskier. So here's some things that you always wanna keep in mind. First things first, roller stands have to be stable and level with your cutting surface. And notice that I say level with your cutting surface, not just level. A lot of improvised work areas are bumpy and lightly sloped. Think backyards and driveways. Our work stands will rarely be level in these situations because they might bank a few degrees in any direction. To use roller stands effectively, they really need to be on the same plane as your cutting surface. If your miter saw bed is sloped a few degrees, but your roller top isn't, then your roller stand can actually torque your board a little bit. It'll create this twist effect, which can draw a board up off the saw bed at the front or back. Once again, you're creating gaps beneath your board, which destabilizes your cut and promotes kickback. If you're using a roller stand, take time beforehand to make sure that it's sitting on the same plane as your cutting surface. And this can be kind of tricky because it may be riding on a lot of lumps in the ground. Some roller stands, like my Work Pro, have foot levelers, which can help. But more often than not, I've kept stacks of little wood blocks of different thickness with me. Mostly quarter inch blocks, half inch, and three quarters. Experiment with shimming up your roller stand with these until you get a level platform with your cutting surface. And it can also really help to weight your roller stand down. Once you have it leveled off, you may want to weight the feet with something. It can be anything really, just dead weight. But these stands have the tendency to walk if they're not well supported. So just pin them down with something fairly heavy. It's a good way to ensure better stability. The other important thing to keep in mind is that they also need to be set at the right height. And by this, I'm not saying the exact same height as your cutting surface, because it can vary by circumstance. For instance, when you're feeding boards through the table saw, it's nice to have a roller stand catching them on the way out. But this roller stand really, really should be a bit lower than the table saw top. Nearly all boards tend to bend ever so slightly as they leave the table. So your roller top needs to be under this curvature to properly catch the board. If it's not at the right height, then your board may strike the front side of the roller and knock it over. This is crazy dangerous because the first thing you're gonna do when it happens is look up real fast to see what went wrong. Now your eyes are off the saw and off the cut. You're having to calculate too many things at once and your eyes should just never leave a cut in progress. So do a quick dry run before you even make the cut. Push the fence out wide or drop the blade. See what's gonna happen to the board as it passes beyond the table. If it lands neatly on your outfeed support, then you'll know you're clear to cut. 
And keep in mind, this also means that you need to be sure your support is at the right distance too. You wanna be able to finish your cut well, as in push it all the way through the blade. If your stand is too close, it may act as a fulcrum, lifting your piece up before it clears the blade. Once again, this is very dangerous because it's gonna pull your board up off the blade during a cut. So find the right distance and right height that lets your board finish up resting just behind the blade, but still well supported. Those are my tips for proper roller stand usage. I love this Work Pro, by the way. Best one on the market as far as I'm concerned. It's really sturdy and it has these flip up guides that keep your board on the roller just in case it's tempted to slide off. I'll link this model below as well as some other stands and tools that might be helpful. And be sure to check out Power Tools Explained. It's available right now at the new and improved thehonestcarpenter.com. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll consider subscribing down below. I'm Ethan James with thehonestcarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.